market of day, Bob? Okay, today we're fishing for Boston mackerel, and normally um, to catch them you have to use these little uh, worms with the hooks, Boston mackerels, okay, not use them, throwing them away, don't even want to use them. I'm just going to use a plain hook with a viper flash, only, nothing else, just a viper flash, no kind of bait on there at all, just a viper flash, right here. We're going to drop over and see if we can't catch a few. Yeah. And here come the headboats to join us. When Boston mackerel are here, a headboat trip can sure cure cabin fever. Virginia Beach on the High Hopes, Captain David Wright. Uh, special guest to Dr. James C. Wright today, catching Boston mackerel. And, oop, got him on right here, right now. Just hook one. See if I can get a double on here. A spinner blade on it. It seems to be working real good. I got three guys on both sides of me, and I'm the only one hooked up. And that tells me something special right exactly. there. That tells me something special. All right, here we go. And there's a nice one right here. That, on that viper flash. Bare hook. Just a viper flash on there. That's it. The other common mackerels caught in Virginia are the king mackerel on top and the Spanish mackerel on the bottom. That black in the front of the dorsal fin makes this a Spanish mackerel. Now that lateral line dips abruptly under the dorsal fin of the king, while it gradually tapers on the Spanish, and spots stay on the Spanish, but may be present on juvenile kings. Now let's go catch some. Atlantic mackerel are cold weather fish. Spanish mackerel like summertime weather. And Rocky Planus grabbed that first hookup as we located a school. Did it? Watch your fingers, you're 
always do your homework. This Osprey and the Pelicans are here for good reason. Now, if you want to know what's there, watch the landings from commercial anglers. Now, these are pound nets. When the gill netters dock, they can show you what's out there right now. But when you read about it, it's always going to be history. They're catching them all in the bottom. Well, that's a nicer sized bluefish. Uh huh. Those are big enough to eat. Now, currently, we have a 14 inch minimum for both Spanish and King mackerel. But you got to remember that can change at any time. Now, once you locate a school, trolling four small Clark spoons can rapidly fill a cooler because we have a 10 fish per angler limit. Dr. Bob Nash always seems to catch mackerel every time he joins us. Now the Spanish mackerel are my favorite seafood. All you have to do is just cut down to the backbone right behind the gills, turn the knife towards the tail, and cut off the filet. Then all you have to do is put the skin side down on the grill and test it with a fork. Now these small bluefish are real good too. I think your leaders should be a little more heavy fine, because they get two. All right. The big one. Big spanning, big spanning. Big. Okay, you walk back a little bit after you get it up and out there. Walk, walk back. He's in there. Walk, walk. Big spanning. Big spanning. Walk by the Spaniard. All right. Yeah. easier just to cut off all the lures and start over, which we eventually did. Oh, 
King mackerel fishing off the coast of Virginia Beach. We like to try several different baits when we're fishing for king mackerel, but it's always hard to beat a live bait. We've got this bait rigged with a, a seven alt hook hooked just in front of the dorsal fin of the bait. Then we've got a treble hook that's going to hang right below the bottom of the fish. If the king mackerel aren't concentrated, while we're looking for them, we usually troll. We use several different baits when we're trolling as well. One of the most popular baits over the years has been a strip of bonita or false albacore. We have a little special rig for that. It's called a safety pin rig. We take a piece of wire, make a rig out of light wire, we push this piece of wire right through the front of the strip bait, and then we just wrap it around the wire a little right in front, making a hook almost like a safety pin. Then we wrap a, the, a piece of uh, light copper wire around the front of the bait. We put the hooks in the bait itself, but it's very important to pull the strip bait by the front, not by the hooks. If you pull it by the hooks, it'll spin. The, the baits that I just showed you that we troll with troll just under the surface of the water. Sometimes the king mackerel are a little deeper than that. And we'll pull a number three and a half LB Huntington drone spoon 
and in front of that we pull a planer. This is a number four planer, weighs about four ounces, and it'll take the bait down deeper than a pound of lead would. Uh, the way the planer works is when you're trolling, you set the planer so that it's diving at this angle. This little weight at the front keeps the front of the planer down and it, it dives deep. Your bait's attached to the leader hooked to the back. Then when a fish hits it, it pops and comes to the surface. So now you're fighting the fish and not a pound of weight or the heavy pull of the planer. Now let's catch a few kings off the Virginia, North Carolina border. Now kings are plentiful off North Carolina, but they sort of end their northern migration off Wachapri. Now this is going to be another swinger. Remember the Spanish average about two to three pounds with an occasional five pounder. Now these kings are averaging eight to nine pounds with an occasional 20 pounder swimming around out there. But remember the larger king mackerel are usually caught on live bait. We just get a lot more knockdowns and hookups by trolling. Not a happy camper. Right, I won't throw this one back over. No. <laughs> you throw it back over instead. Not the fish. Now see that lateral line dip abruptly towards the belly under that dorsal fin? Thanks, David Black. Now let's go do that again. Looks like a blue one this time. Okay, now watch just as this fish comes straight to the boat just under the water surface. A Spanish mackerel will be flopping on the surface, while a false albacore will usually be dashing from side to side. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Show us his teeth now. Another day, we found an inshore wreck that was really covered with fish. Nice 
usually more than one species are found around a wreck. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Mike Hayes just simply couldn't resist one bridge rod way back, even though he was driving. I can't tell what it is, Chip. I think it is. It's false albacore, I think. Now, we usually keep one or two false albacore to make strip bait, and then we release the rest. Thank you. 